Hi, welcome to The Peaceful Home. I'm Teresa Elling and this is a series decorating a room from start to finish. Now today we're focusing on painted furniture and I'm going to chalk paint this dresser. Chalk painting secondhand finds is one of the best ways to stay in your budget with a room redo. I have at least three pieces that I will be redoing for this guest room. I do have another tutorial on a step-by-step -step easy tutorial for chalk painting and I will link that below. That's when I did a small cabinet. Going to start with the first three steps, going to remove the hardware, going to wipe down the whole piece and clean it thoroughly, and then I'm going to prop it up on these little triangles so that I can paint the bottom without hitting the drop cloth. Once in a while, a screw from the hardware will dig all the way down into the wood, and so you need to add some washers, possibly a longer screw to repair that. I actually have a video on that, repairing drawers in this way. It is super simple. I will link that below in case you've ever encountered this problem. It will show you exactly how to fix it. You wanna make sure to put all of your hardware and the screws in a very safe place. So I suggest a container where you can put them aside and nothing will get lost. Then you're ready to clean. It's amazing the dirt and even spider webs that are underneath the hardware. So even if you don't wanna change out your hardware, it's necessary to remove for cleaning and for painting. As I remove the doors, I am going to number them one through three, four through six, seven through nine, just so that I put them all back in the right spot. I just write a number inside where no one will see it. You also may find when you remove the doors that one of the plastic slides, it's a guide to go along this piece so that the drawer goes smoothly in and out. You may find that the piece has fallen off. So this would be the time to reattach these. There's a piece right here that almost looks like it got chewed up by a dog. I remember once one of our puppies chewing the legs of a rocking chair, it looked just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just sand it down, kind of round out the corner, and then do the same on the other side, just so they're um, as equal as possible. The only other sanding that would be necessary is if you really want a smooth finish and you've got nicks and dings that you want to sand smooth. Um, this is a laminate top. I have never painted the laminate top with chalk paint. I'm really excited to try this because it supposedly works. Um, I can remember in the 90s painting pieces with primer first and an oil-based primer and then paint and even then it seemed like you would be able to scratch the paint off. Um, just nothing adhered well, even sanding the surface didn't work. So I'm gonna give it a try and see what happens. One thing you don't wanna do is sand off a finish like poly and leave the raw wood, if it's a dark wood and you're painting a very light color like white, because the tannins in the wood will actually come through your white paint. So in those cases, I actually recommended that you seal the wood Put one coat of poly on just to keep that color from bleeding through. And when it's thoroughly dry, you can chalk paint after that. As soon as I opened this, I wondered if the paint is going to be dark enough for what I want. Uh, it does dry a little darker, so I'm going to put on a coat and see what it looks like when it dries. One of the best ways to tell your paint color is to put it on a white piece of paper. I did two coats and I dried it with a blow dryer so that I can get a pretty accurate idea of what this color is going to look like, especially since my furniture will be sitting against a white wall of this color. I'm also setting it next to my inspiration piece to see if the color is lining up. 
and it actually looks pretty good. It's lighter than I thought, but it's definitely a good match. I think it's showing a little darker on camera than what I'm seeing, but the shade is definitely right. So I have the choice to um, either stick with this or go slightly darker. I just got back from the hardware store and they were able to fix the color for me. Now, a lot of times they can't get an exact color match, but they can usually um, look at the difference between the two formulas and increase color and obviously you can't go lighter but i was going darker in this case and um, they're just really great about helping you take responsibility for it if you don't like the color of course you can't return it but it was worth the risk and um, you can see by the um, dried sample on the lid that this is much closer to the color that i really wanted so i'm excited to try it out. I need to cut in along here the top and the bottom, but I realized that this front is so flat, a roller would really work well for this. You just have to watch at the joints here that you don't let paint accumulate. You might need to go in with your brush there so that there are no drips. On the drawers like this, I'm just going in the sides with the paintbrush and then rolling the top. You don't have to roll this, you absolutely could do the whole thing with the paintbrush. After the paint is completely dry, I distressed by using my sander. You can use just a, a piece of sandpaper, but I like using the sander because it's faster and less effort. So I just go around and I hit wherever you would naturally bump into a piece of furniture. So along the edges and the sides, the corners, and that just leaves a little bit of a raw finish for either a glaze, a stain, or a paint to go on for a distressed look. After that, you wanna seal your piece. In this case, I used a glaze. This is the Dark Glaze by Velvet Finishes. And I'm just gonna show you an up close of getting in here in kind of the cracks and crevices. This drawer is pretty small, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the whole thing. But normally you would just work in small areas, about this size. Wax is removed with a dry cloth. This is removed with a wet cloth. And so you come in and you kind of remove. And what happens is the wax gets stuck in these grooves and it just kind of brings some depth to the piece, gives it a little bit of an antiqued finish. And when it's left to dry, it will create a durable finish. It's also 
sinking in to the parts that I sanded. And that really can't be removed because now it's raw wood. So the glaze is going to settle into those areas and it can be wiped off a little bit, but not fully. Now I followed the manufacturer's instructions and it seemed to go fine on the drawers and the small areas. But as soon as I got to the sides and the top, I began to have a problem. I just couldn't seem to wipe the glaze off fast enough before it began to set and I had to rinse my rag several times, which isn't that unusual, but it just still wasn't working right. In the end, the look was a little bit blotchy and it didn't have a nice finish. I left all the drawers, but I did go over the top with another coat of chalk paint, and then I sealed it with my clear wax with a little bit of color added in. The wax gets wiped off as well, but this time with a dry rag rather than a wet one, and you leave it overnight to dry. In the morning, all you have to do is take a soft dry rag and buff it to a slight sheen. This turned out to be a much better result and I was finally happy with it. This is what the hardware looked like before. Um, I like the color, but it was just a little bit dingy. So I used some rub and buff and this is how it came out. I love this. I'm actually going to do a separate video to show you how I use rub and buff. I did run into a few more issues painting this dresser than I normally do. I had to deal with the paint color, with the glaze finish, and redoing with a wax finish. But in the end, I really do love this piece. I think it's beautiful. I think it is transformed from what it looked like before. And now it's going to be a perfect addition for my guest room. If you're new here, I'm Teresa Elling. I am a professional organizer, parenting coach, wife and homeschool mom to six graduated kids. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing. This is a little bit of a bonus video in the middle of our series, how to decorate a room from start to finish. If you have missed any of those videos, I will link the playlist below. Thanks so much for joining me today on The Peaceful Home.